So if I say, all right, I'm going to give you an equation, and I'm going to ask you to graph it. If I were to give you the equation, y equals 2x minus 4, and if I gave you the option, I know which way you would use. You would use the slope-intercept form because it's the easiest, and the equation you're looking at is already in slope-intercept form. So that's where you would say, okay, begin here, and then you would go down 4, right? And then the slope is telling you go up to over four, up o over one, up two over one, up two over one, maybe even add a few down two, left one, and you would have a line, okay? You don't need to draw your line. I know you don't have rulers right now, but so I would do this and everything would be great, right? Okay, so I want to point something out. The title of this lesson says graph using X and Y intercepts, and we know what a Y intercept is. We've been using it for weeks now, right? It's where the line touches the y-axis at. What we may never have stopped to think about is that every line, unless it's horizontal, also has an x-intercept. It's the exact same definition of a y-intercept, except instead of where it touches the x-axis, or the y-axis, it's where it touches the x-axis, okay? So we're going to kind of discover a few things about this y-intercept and this x-intercept. So what is the name of this x-intercept right here? When I say give me the name of a point, I mean what's the ordered pair? And so we go back to fourth grade. I remember the fourth grade homework, and what is it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So a lot of kids, even in second trimester of high school algebra, they get that confused. Is it negative four, zero, or zero, negative four? And Ben was right. He said it's zero, negative four. Here's why. Because in a coordinate plane system, your ordered pair, okay, and I want you to write this because today's answers, every answer you give me has to have two ordered pairs. So this is called an ordered pair. It's an X comma Y. And an ordered pair consists of your X value. And your X value tells you where to go along your X axis. And what direction does an x-axis go? It goes left and it goes right. So this number tells you to move left or right. I know you remember left means negative, right means positive, right? So if I'm at 0, 0, where every ordered pair begins, hey, guess what? It's where it originates. Why do you think they call that the origin? It's because where it originates, right? So every point originates from the origin. It's telling you, if I want you to stay on the y-axis, how much do I want you moving left or right? None. So don't move left or right. That's what the zero in that first spot means. Don't. Stay right where you're at. Oh, okay. Now let's move over to the Y point and the Y coordinate. That's your vertical. That's where it says, okay, now that you've done all your left and right, move up and down. In this case, it said, don't go left or right, but go down 4. And that's why the name of that point is 0, negative 4. Where is point negative 4, 0? Right there. Right? Because from the origin, go 4 to the left. But this time, don't do what? Move up and down. And that's why that's that. We're not worried about this one right now. We're focusing on these two. So are you good with where the 0 goes? Here's the other thing. What axis is it on? It's touching the y-axis, so there better be a point in the y spot. Okay, that's another way to do it. All right, so having said that, then what is the name of this point right here? 2, 0 or 0, 2? Two? 2, 0. Because this time, if I want you to stay on the x-axis, you get where you need to get going sideways, but once you get there... What do I want your vertical movement to be? Nothing. That's why that's a zero. And it's the concept that I just explained about moving left or right or off of or onto that's going to help you understand this lesson. So do you understand why the zeros are in the spot that they're in? Okay, good. So let's move on from there. So I want you to take a look at this equation. So if I have 2x plus 3y equals 12... And if I say graph it, I would probably bet money on the fact that if I said to you guys to graph that, you would immediately start to do what? 
Put it in slope intercept form, right? How many of you raise your hand if that's probably what you would have done? Yeah, okay. And up until now, that's what I expect you to do. But now I'm giving you a different way. And some of you will say, oh my gosh, that's so much easier than solving for y. Solving for y is kind of a pain in the butt, especially when there's a coordinate or a coefficient here that I have to divide by. So I'm going to show you a way, and you're going to be like, that's awesome. So here's the deal. So we just discovered that when it's on the y-axis, which coordinate should show 0? The x. And when it's on the x-axis, which coordinate should show 0? The y. Sounds, seems weird, right? Let's write that. So if it's on the x-axis, then the y has to be 0 by default. We just discovered that. So if it's on the y-axis, that means the x has to be 0. So if it's the x-intercept, the y will be 0, meaning, if it's, um, meaning it's going to look like this. There'll be a 0 in that spot. And if it's on the y-axis, then I know there'll be a zero in that spot. Mike, we grab the door, please, sweetie? Thank you. All right, so you're ready for this awesome, cool way? So here's the deal. I always have to show you, the first time I ever show you a problem, I have to show you, like, all these extra notes and all these teaching things, and then I say, hey, guess what? Now that you know that, let's skip this part. So let's take this equation, 2x plus 3y equals 12, and let's take y and make it 0. And let's do the calculation with that. So that means 2x plus 3y equals 12. y is 0. And I learned in third grade when my teacher taught me my multiplication facts that zero product property is kind of a magical property because it makes everything disappear, right? Because 0 times anything is 0. And in math, if there's zero, do I really need to put anything? No. So you mean that that whole 3y just kind of disappears? Yep. What do you see left when I take my finger and cover it up? Yes, I do. So let's write 2x equals 12, and let's solve it. That's a little itty-bitty baby equation. Okay, everybody, please, eyes up here. It's easy if you pay attention. It's not if you don't. Divide by 2. And my x-intercept is 6, but I'm not done. Because the directions are going to say, find the x and y-intercepts, write them as ordered pairs, and an ordered pair has a parenthesis with an x and a comma and a y, and then graph it using the intercepts. So I need to make an ordered pair on my answer, except now here we're, forced, we're faced with what do I do now? Where does the 6 go? Well, it's not really a tough decision. Where does the 6 go? It's the x. It's, it's the front. It's the first one. Oh, and x was 6 when I made y 0. There's my x-intercept. Because without it, what might you think about that? You might think what? Vertical line. Yeah. Right? Uh-uh. I'm not talking about x equals 6 as a vertical line. I'm talking about x equals 6 as a point on the x-axis. I'm going to draw a line once I figure out the y-axis or the y-intercept. So guess what? We do this process again, except this time we make what? x equal to 0. So I take my 2x plus 3y equals 12, and this time I put 0 right there. Right? <clears throat> And guess what? Same thing happens. 2 times 0 is 0. I'm going to cover that up. What do you see? What equation do you see? 3y equals 12. And then I solve that. And my y-intercept is what? Good. So if it's 4, right now I'm looking at it thinking, ooh, horizontal line at y equals... No. This is a point that is 0, comma 4. And it's 0, comma 4 because this is y, so you better put it in the y spot. Just like I put the x in the x spot. Are you with me? So I know what you're thinking. Well, we're not done yet. Let's just finish it. Okay, there's so many little itty-bitty pieces to this problem that I'll see kids do all this work. Perfect, perfect. And then they plot it wrong. you got to know where to put each of those points. So sometimes, if these zeros confuse you, I go back up to this. Go to the y-axis at 4. 
Go to the x-axis at 6. Put a point at the y at 4. The x at 6. How many points do you need to make a line? Two. You got them? Yeah. Connect them. You're good to go. And then I want to point something out. What word have I not said in the last 10 minutes? Over. Slope. I haven't said slope once. Guess what? I don't need it when I, when I do the x and y intercepts. Because I find where it I need two points to make a line. Touches here, touches there. I'm good to go. So let me just show you something. I'm going to show you. I'm going to tie literally all three parts together right now. Part one, part two, and part three. I don't need slope intercept. I don't even need to know the slope of this line. But if you're a checker, and by that I mean somebody who is so meticulous in their work that they go back and double check it, how could you double check it? What's the slope of this line? Yes, thank you. I heard it. Negative 4 over 6. Because you went down 4 over 6. So this is not anything you're going to have to do. But you just found out that the slope is negative 4, 6, which reduces what? Negative 2 thirds. Is there a way to make sure, using my equation 2x plus 3y equals 12, that that slope is actually indeed negative 2 thirds? Yep. Now could you maybe solve for y? And this is not a must. This is just to, just to be careful. Let's do this. How many of you looked at it and you know it's going to be negative 2 thirds? Because you know the x is going over to be negative. Divide by 3. Awesome. We're getting used to it. Negative 2x plus 12. Hey, let's divide by 3. And there it is. Negative 2 thirds x. What's my y-intercept? Hey, this does a lot for me, doesn't it? Did I just figure out that the y-intercept is 4? Does this confirm for me that it's 4? Does it confirm for me that I plotted the points right? Yes? And somebody said, well, you gotta go. You didn't go down 4 over 6. You went down 2 and over 3. Okay, look, let's do that. Down 2 over 3. Boom, there I am. 4, 6, and 2 thirds are the same. So this is just one, two baby steps. 4, 6 is one giant step. It's still all on the line, right? So guess what? That's pretty awesome that I could put it in slope intercept form if I want and check. And let's bring it full circle. Let's make a table of values. Oh, right? Oh, I mean, I'm not you don't have to do this, but what <laughs> if you had to choose some values of x that you want to multiply by two thirds, what would you choose? Negative three, negative three, negative three zero positive three. So you, have to do it you, you, you can stop here. I'm just being a teacher you have to do it that way. Okay. this way. You have to do it this way. I need you to arrive at these. This is me just kind of saying, hey, here's how it all ties together. Does this make sense now? Yeah. Because you're seeing it three different ways, and now it just came together. Guess what? We're not going to do this calculation. I mean, we could if we wanted to, but basically put it in here, multiply it, add it, and you get your table. Okay. So now, you want to know what you're going to have to do. Watch this. I'm going to start this problem all over from scratch. This is the problem that's going to be on your paper, and this is what you're going to do. Raise your finger. Take your finger and cover up the 2 and the X. Yeah. Maybe you could even do this. Remember how we used to have to make two equations for the... Yes, for the absolute value. Here's the positive one. Here's the negative one. Here's the X equation. Here's the y-intercept equation. I'm looking at it. I see a 3y equals 12, and then I cover up the other one, and I see what? 2x equals 12. 2x equals 12, and I solve them both. Oh. y is 4, 0, 4. x is 6, 6, 0. I'm done. Graph it. You have to have both. Yeah, it's the x and the y-intercept. Okay, take a look at the notes that I gave you. No, no, uh, you, this is only work you need to show me. But both ways mean you need to show the x and the y. You don't need to go back through and do all that other stuff I did. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're done. I'll show you what you need to do. Ready? This is what I need. That, that, and the graph. These three things are, are what we're writing at. Okay, so take a look at your notes real quick. Zoom in on number one. Number one is just kind of there. I already solved it for you. Yes. Oh, yeah, hold on. It says independent practice. Go to the notes. Yep, there's two sides to it. One says notes. 
One says independent practice. Thank you for flipping me over here. So no equation. Write those as X and Y intercepts as ordered pairs, please. And if you read the directions, you'll see them that says write as ordered pairs. In the X spot, put 1 and Y is 0. In the Y spot, put negative 2 and X is 0. Plot them correctly, please. Okay, Malin, I'm going to ask you a second time to put that away because then you're going to be behind in algebra instead of that. Okay, when you're absent, you need to pay attention. X is 1, Y is 0. X, y, um, X, y is negative 2 and X is 0. And all you need is 2 points to make a line. Could you, if I asked you to write an equation for that, could you? Probably. What's the Y intercept? Negative 2. What's the slope? Is that the equation that matches that line? We're not doing that. But no, I won't ask you to do that. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one. This is kind of like the one we just did. Except the, uh, the one we did had a plus in it. So let's just see what this does. So guess what? I'm going to make my one. I'm going to make my two. I'm going to cover up this. Be careful. Don't cover up that minus. So what equation do you see here? And then, just some friendly advice. I, I write both of my equations out before I solve them. And then what's this one? 2x equals 12. And then I solve them. So the only thing that this changes is it changes your y-intercept to negative 4, which is 0, negative 4. And then this one is 6, like we did before. You got your two ordered pairs, 0, negative 4. Six zero. You got two points. What's the slope? I don't really care. But if I wanted to, it's one two three four. One two three four five six, which is four six, which is two thirds, which is what I would get if I solved it. Okay. Couple weird things are going to happen. Let's go up to number two. So number two in your notes. Move there for me. Make your little 1 and 2, cover up x. What's your first equation that you have? Say with me. 5y um, five five equals 5. Don't solve it yet. Cover this one up. Ooh, bonus. X. What, what's your x-intercept? Five. 5. There's no coefficient. There's no dividing. You did not have to do any calculation. Your x-intercept is 5. So, But let's go back and solve this one. My y-intercept is 1, which means I have 0, comma 1, but you still have to put that as an ordered pair, which means 5, comma 0. Plot them, connect them, you're done. Way easier than solving for y, isn't it? Okay, so 0, comma 1. Oh, sorry. Mm, third time's charm. 0, comma 1, 5, comma 0. It points all over the place. Connect. If I needed to solve for it, what does the slope of this line look like? Not positive. Down one. So for the heck of it, we'll just slow, throw it because that's not going away. All right. Let's take a look at number four now. So this kind of moves us right into number four because something similar happens. So let's make our one and our two. Cover up the x, and what do you have? Negative y equals 1. Does that mean that my, my y-intercept is 1? It means it's negative 1. So go ahead and write this, that you have to do what? I mean, no, that's kind of like a shortcut enough if you know, but a lot of people are going to skip it and just write 1, and it's going to be wrong because it's actually has to be divided by a negative. So your y-intercept is negative 1. And now cover this up. This brings up a really good point. What's going to happen? When I get 3x equals 1 and I divide by 3, I get an ugly old fraction. Big deal. It's algebra. Everything's not going to be whole numbers and unicorns and rainbows. Some fractions pop up. So now... This brings up a good point. How do I graph that? Well, here's the deal. These lines are pretty skinny, and sometimes if you have a 
thicker pen or a thicker pencil, trying to fit it exactly at one third is probably not going to happen. So here's my goal for you. Get it in between the correct two no integers on the number line and that's good enough for me. So here's zero negative one. What two integers is zero or is one third in between? Zero and positive one. Get it somewhere in between there. If you are an overachiever and a perfectionist, then you might want to put it right there because that looks like about a third of the way, right? Okay? I promise you I'm not going to mark it wrong if you have it a little millimeter to the right. I'm not that picky. Okay? And there we go. Nope, nope, they'll be good with that, okay? So that brings us to number five, okay? I mean, that's called being precise and paying attention to precision is, is, a, is a valuable skill, okay? I mean, there will be things later that depending on what they're asking you to do, they may mark you wrong. All right, so cover this up. What do I see? Negative five Y equals 15. Cover this up. What do you see? 4x equals 15. Okay, solve them both. And then I want you to see what happens on equation 2 over here. Um, okay. So notice that I kept it 15 fourths, and we just had this conversation, all the math teachers. Um, the seventh grade math teachers get frustrated when they leave their answers like that because learning to change improper <laughs> fractions, bless you, to mix numbers is a seventh grade learning target. So they leave it 15 fourths, and the seventh grade math teachers lose their minds. Well, in algebra, we don't care. 15 fourths, that's how you want to leave it? Then go ahead, make it 15 fourths and call it a day. However, for your ease of graphing, if I ask you to graph 0, negative 3, awesome, no big deal. If I ask you to graph 15 fourths on the x-axis, yeah, in your head, would it be easier to graph maybe 3 and 3 fourths? Yeah. So you can leave it 15 fourths in your ordered pair. You could make it three and three fourths if you're in your ordered pair if you want. I don't care. I'm just saying that a mixed number is easier to graph. So what two integers is three and three fourths in between? Three and four. Three and three fourths. Okay. Okay, swimmers, your homework is the six problems on the back. Okay, good luck tonight. All right, lots of swimmers in here. Ooh, Milan, you guys got to go all the way to Milan today, huh? All right, good luck, guys. So that means you have 50 minutes on the bus to do your homework. Awesome. Milan's like an hour away. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, Milan, it's a city. 50 minutes away. Out west. I don't know, I'll show you. I think it's like right here. Okay, back to X and Y intercept. Awesome. Are we good? Like, that's it. Okay? So I will tell you and give you a little sneak peek into what 4, 3 is. This form with an X and a Y and a constant is called standard form. Okay? So when you're given a form that's not slope-intercept form, it's probably standard form. And when it's in standard form, you have two choices. Either put it in slope-intercept form, solve it for y and graph it that way, or use the intercepts, right? Okay, awesome.